This is Inside Badger Football with head coach Trey Shucker. Inside Badger Football is brought to you by Bell Wealth Services, Welch Funeral Home, Austin Wingfield State Farm, Southern Bank Corp, Southwest Sporting Goods, the accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning, and Plyler, Taylor King Law, Pricing Company, Doctors Rob and Gary Rowe, Eccles, Thompson, and Kneebone, Certified Public Accountants, Clark County Farm Bureau, South Central Connect, Java Primo, Southwest Auto Collection, R&T Dixon Enterprises, Arkadelphia Tire and Outfitters, Patterson Federal Credit Union, Bats and Signs, Sonic of Arkadelphia, Dairy Queen, Pediatrics Plus, Rise Counseling, and Print Mania. The host of Inside Badger Football is Chase Hartson. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Inside Badger Football with Trey Shucker. I'm Chase Hartzell, and as always, we're joined by Coach Shucker. Coach Shucker, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me today. Now, it feels weird to say this because we just finished the first conference game of the year, but we're already halfway done with the regular season. <laughs> yeah, we are. You know, 4-0 going into the season, we've only got eight games. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where just take the games as they come, and, um, you know, we'd like to have a 10-game schedule, but just the situation is we've only got eight for, this, for the regular season. And we're already halfway there. It's crazy to think that. So have you and the team had to change your approach to some games because of that shortened schedule, or is it usually just business as usual, I guess? It's pretty much business as usual. Um, you know, the biggest thing, you know, is on those, on those off weeks is focus on ourselves, get healthy if, if we're in that situation of needing to get healthy. Uh, the biggest thing is just focus on ourselves, perfect our craft, and to be the best team that we can be. Well, this week it was a big test, first conference game of the year, and not only that, it was against an old foe in the form of Nashville. Now, as soon as you enter the city limits of Nashville, you can tell that that is a football town. The Scrappers are very proud of that program. Six state championships on top of that, and they've been right in the mix the last several years. It's been a big rivalry with Arkadelphia, especially the past decade. We've yeah. really seen the, the rivalry really reach back up to where it's been for its peak. So what was that test like for you going in? Because this was your first game due to the COVID cancellation back in 2020. Right. So this was our first time there as, you know, our staff, our new staff. And then so it was awesome. Uh, just a great environment. Just like you said, Nashville is a football town. When people think of Nashville, they think of scrapper football and, you know, have all the tradition you can think of and, and just a great program overall. And so being able to play in that environment um, was great for our kids, was great for our program was really good to see how our kids responded in that situation, starting the conference off in that environment. You know, it's one of those things where uh, anytime you go to Nashville, you've got to play well to win. And I thought our kids did a really good job. We minimized penalties. We, it was our cleanest game that we've had yet. Uh, we executed really, really well in all phases of the game. Offense executed really well. Defense uh, had a big second half shutout, and then we were able to score on special teams as well with a big kickoff return. So. Um, in, in every phase, I thought we executed really, really well and played clean football. You talked about the success in all three aspects of the game. We're actually going to have some stats up on the board here in just a minute. But just looking at the offensive production, one stat that really stood out in this one was just how many chunk plays there were. Mm -hmm. You look at the average per play, almost 10 yards per play. That's almost a first down every time you're snapping the ball on offense. What allowed the offense to be so dynamic against a scrapper defense that – really was strong at times and has shown some strength throughout the, the non-conference schedule. Yes, uh, the biggest thing that I can say is our offensive line had the best game of their night, or of, of the season. They had the best night of the season and uh, they really controlled the line of scrimmage in the run game and in the pass protection, allowed us to do, you know, just run our offense and, uh, you know, gave Donovan time to find our receivers in the passing game and gave our, our running backs time to, to find the hole and open up the hole for us to get through and did a great job dominating the line of scrimmage. It's our offensive line's best uh, performance of the season up to this point. And on the defensive side of the ball, it was a new challenge this year because we saw more of the triple option from the Scrappers than perhaps yeah. we even saw in last year's matchup. A little bit of a change in personnel, but the defense really stepped up and allowed even fewer points than the year before despite this being a much more dynamic and really improved Nashville offense. Yeah, we kind of adjusted our scheme this week to kind of fit what, what Nashville was doing. Um, but, uh, you know, the best thing that I could say 
from, from a defensive standpoint this week was our defensive line did a great job of adjusting and, and understanding the reads. Um, just because we, we, we changed a few things, we tweaked a few things, we always do, right? But um, we changed a little bit more than we normally do this week. And our defense line did a great job of, of understanding the game plan and, and really did a good job of, of executing the game plan. And so it really made things difficult for Nashville to get some things done that they wanted to do. You, you mentioned the triple option and, and the read option, things like that. So um, we did a really good job combating that and making sure that we were getting jerseys to the football and wrapping up and getting the ball down. And then on the back end of it, you know, we, they did have some really good schemes in the passing game that we, we knew that they were going to take a shot in here and there and, and do a good job of trying to get us out of position. But our DBs did a really good job of trusting their technique, trusting their eyes, trusting their reads, and maintaining leverage in the passing game and pass coverage. A lot of great things to unpack in this game, and now we're going to get a chance to look at the tape. These were the highlights from the game against Nashville. So the team running out onto the field, and we've talked about it already, the hill at Scrapper Stadium, really one of the most electric atmospheres in the conference. It really is, and especially whenever, you know, anytime the Scrappers and the Badgers get together, it's going to be a big environment, whether it's here or there. Um, you know, they had a, a big pep rally before the game, and they, they did a really good job, had a, had a big crowd there, just a big environment overall. Um, just starting the game, we knew that if we could execute early, if we can get the ball going, get a few first downs, keep the drive alive, and if we could score that first drive, it would open up things for us. Um, and this is a big play right here by Evan Bailey. Simple throw and catch, but Evan Bailey's able to break a lot of tackles. He's a big kid. He's our biggest receiver that we've got. 6'3", 180 pounds, 185 pounds, um, just a really good athlete for us. And then you see our offensive line doing a really good job in the pass protection as well as the run game. Almost there, just through the hands of Evan, uh, doing a really good job pushing it vertical and, and getting, getting open, really. Um, but playing fast and then, you know, kind of got behind the sticks there towards the Closer we got to the, to the end zone and we're not able to come up with a score. We had a, a touchdown that was called back. But defense gets on the field and uh, we knew what they were trying to do. You know, their quarterback was their best player, their quarterback and running back. We knew that they were going to make plays. We just had to withstand it, bend and not break. And our defense did a really good job of, of attacking it, wrapping up. You're seeing a lot of white jerseys getting to the football. We wanted to fly around and set the tone early in the game. See us right here, we're flying around. And there you see Hopkins on another strong run. And looking at the tape, you can tell how methodical this drive was. There were a few chunk plays like this one here, the run from Perrin. But really, the scrappers taking their time. Was time of possession really a concern in this matchup? Uh, it was, and we knew that uh, they were going to run the football. That's what they're best at. And then, you know, when that wasn't working in some deeper situations, they'd try to throw, throw something deep. And this was a really good play on their end. They got us with the reverse, the trickery. Um, you know, we, we didn't stay at home on the back end of it. We were able to run it down and not allow the touchdown but, um, and make them run an extra play to score. So with the missed PAT, it's now 6 to nothing Nashville. But at the end of that play, you saw something from Hopkins that really makes him dangerous. He's got some speed, but he's also got a lot of strength, and he uses his good footwork to keep extending plays in that time he was able to spin around and extend the ball forward he for is, the score. He's a, he's a really good player and we knew that we had to contain him. We knew he was going to be tough to tackle and that's why we had to get multiple white jerseys to the football. And early on in the game we talked about the chunk plays going into this one but really the offense doing a good job of trying to set the tempo here with some of those shorter pass plays that start to, to add up as the game goes along. That's right. We did a better job of um, our tempo overall, and then hitting those shorter passes, we're able to open up something deep like, like we just saw here with Latonio Hughes. Just a, a really good job by our offensive line, uh, maintaining the blocks in the pass pro, and then Donovan's able to kind of get out of the pocket and make something happen there. And, uh, Latonio was able to keep his route vertical, able to get behind the defense, and Donovan was able to find him. Our kickoff cover down right here. 
overall, our kickoff unit has been really, really good for us all season. Um, Friday night was no exception to that. It was really, really good. We were able to get down and cover down and, and get the returner down within the 20, I think, two or three times. So any time that we can cover down, get the returner down within the 20, it puts our defense in a really good position uh, to get the offense off the field. And Nashville did a really good job of maintaining some drives. We, we put them in a lot of third and short, fourth and short situations on the night that they converted, and that's something that we've got to continue to work on and improve on. But they put together a few 12 play drives. I think their longest was a 17, 18 play drive. And, you know, we just got to get them off the field in those situations. We talked about the option for Nashville, but a nice little option play there for the Badgers. Yeah, Donovan's one of those guys that he, he can hurt you with his legs too. He's big, he's two, 220 pounds, um, and he can run. You see him right here, he's getting out, uh, getting around defenders and able to get upfield for a first down and keep the drive moving. Jaquavis Purefoy able to come in and, and really do a good job with his legs. Um, we're able to hand him the ball. He does a really good job in the pass game too, catching the ball. He's one of those dynamic players for us. And then Evan Bailey, we saw him, uh, saw a pass go through his hands earlier in the game, but he's able to come up with a big catch right there to put us in a really good field position to score and get us in the red zone goal line area. And then Kyle was able to get the, get the ball in the end zone. And then we went for two right there, put our heavier unit in, and we're able to just quarterback sneak it. So now it is 15 to six and the scrappers really having to play but from behind for the first time by more than one score. Yeah. And so whenever we were in this situation, you know, our defense felt, hey, we, we're, we're up two scores. We just got to keep pouring it on, put more on them, put more on them. And, you know, our defensive coaches do a great job of, of really reiterating that, hey, keep pouring it on, keep pouring it on all night. And so you see us continue to play with intensity, and that's, that's the way we want to play in every aspect of the game. You know, we want to keep going all night long. Um, and our defense has done a great job of that all season. Um, you know, we're able to get, pitch the shutout in the second half. It's not the first time we've done that this season. You know, our defense does a great job of, of figuring out what we've got to do and, and handling the in-game adjustments and then really applying it in the second half and really getting after it. You know, right here, everybody's getting to the football. I love it. And even though we see the scrappers nearing the goal line, they're having to fight for every yard on this drive. Yeah, and that's the thing is, uh, you know, credit to, to Nashville on that, you know, putting some of those longer drives together. Um, we did not make it easy on them, and they were doing a really good job of running through a few things and, and trying to fall forward. Um, and then right there, missed the PAT. Uh, we were able to block the PAT. Nick Williams was able to block it. That was huge for us also. Just to, And then following up right here with a big return by Latonio Hughes in our kickoff return unit. Antonio is our fastest player in our team. Um, you see him really open up and run right there. Once he gets in open space, he's really tough to run down. So now Arkadelphia up 22 to 12 late in the first half. So the scrappers do have some time to try and make something happen. And they do get a little momentum on the drive, but we'll see a great defensive play here in just a few moments. Yes, and it's that bend but don't break defense. Uh, we knew that they were going to be able to make a few plays here and there. We just got to trust our, our reads and keep getting to the football, keep being violent, keep tackling, um, just keep doing the things, the little things right. We're going to be in position just like we see right here. Nick Williams makes a big play, uh, breaks on the football. He, he trusted his eyes, he trusted his read, broke on the football, made a big play, big catch for an interception right there. So the scrappers do manage to keep the Badgers off of the board heading into the break, but now see, we get to the second half. Yeah, you see our cover down unit put our defense in a really good situation, uh, field position wise, and then you see Marvion Berry, our outside senior outside linebacker, able to take a good angle on the ball. Um, you know, their running backs are pretty fast. We knew we had to take good angles, and right there he made a really good open field tackle. We talked about the defensive line, but the linebacking core also had a great game in this one, both in terms of tackling and in coverage. Yes, uh, our linebacking core did a great job of wrapping up and tackling. Um, all of our, we play about five or six linebackers throughout the night. All of them had 
a lot of tackles, and that's a big testament to our defensive line, being able to absorb some of those blocks and, and create some uh, lanes for our linebackers to go make plays. But our linebackers did a really good job of executing as well. And this is where we start to see those chunk plays really start to factor in as the Badgers had several plays in a row here to start off the drive that all resulted in first downs. Yes, Kyle had a big night. Um, you know, he rushed for three touchdowns uh, as a sophomore in a big environment like this. That's a, that's a lot to say about him. That's really, really big for our program and, and him just in confidence. You know, as a sophomore being put in this situation, a lot of people would be nervous. A lot of people would, you know, hesitate in some, some ways. He didn't hesitate at all. Um, offense line did a great job of protecting him and, and opening up some rush lanes for him to get through. So the Badgers defense quickly forcing a three and out, giving the offense another chance to get on the field. And you mentioned Kyle Reed. This was his second game in a row with three touchdowns. Yes, and, uh, you know, Kyle's one of those players that has got a lot of upside, and we, we hope to – to see him continue to improve throughout the season and, and just gain confidence and gain that momentum as a rusher. And then this is another one, Jaquavius Purefoy. He's a sophomore for us. I know we've talked a little bit about him earlier, but um, anytime he's got the ball in his hands, it seems like he's, he's breaking off 20, 30 yard gain. He's one of those dynamic players that we can hand it off to. He's also a receiver for us. Um, just very, very skilled in what he can do. And he just get him the ball is really doesn't matter how we do it, um, he's going to make a play. So following the PAT, it's now 35-12. to 12. Nashville, though, not going away, though. They were fighting still all the way through the second half. That's right, and we're doing a great job of covering down. It's one unit that uh, we really take pride in and really helping our defense with field position. Uh, Coach Chandler, our special teams coordinator, does a great job of getting our guys prepared and with our scheme and, and techniques and effort. And that's really what it comes down to in our, in our special teams. That special teams really comes down to just effort. And that's really one thing we, we really teach. Um, but right here, big play by our junior safety. Really a clean play using the shoulder pad, not the helmet attacking the, the, uh, sh the opponent's shoulder pad as well, keeping everything in the uh, legal area of the game. Just a big, violent hit. Arkadelphia does get the ball back, though. And now a sizable lead, but still this is Nashville, able to make a lot happen very quickly. But speaking of making things happen very quickly, how about Latonio Hughes right here? You just see how fast he is. Anytime uh, he opens up and run, he's hard to get. And uh, we were able to get him up the sideline there. He, he made a good catch, and then the rest is history on that. You know, he, if he gets an open space, you're not going to catch him. see all the white jerseys to the ball there. That's one thing we take pride in is being aggressive and tackling well. And you see us right here, our defensive line doing a good job of getting pressure in the passing game. Nashville um, just behind having to throw the ball more than what they've been comfortable doing up to this point. Our defense line did a really good job of disrupting uh, the quarterback's rhythm. And then secondary did a great job of maintaining the leverage in the passing game and, and making sure that um, we weren't having completions. Big play right there. Donovan's one of those kids that once he gets vertical, um, he's hard to bring down. You see him run through some, some arm tackles. Um, and then that's really what iced the game and, and our last score, but really proud of our performance overall offensively, defensively, and in the special teams. Um, just We really talk about playing the game all the way through. It doesn't matter who's in. We were able to get some, some uh, next guys in, some second team guys in, some younger guys, um, but we really, really teach and preach. It does not matter who's in. The situation is always the same. Um, and we want to execute at a high level. The expectations do not change no matter the situation. Um, if we execute, we can continue to pour it on, and that's what we did. That's right, and let's just take a moment to, to address that because you looked at Arkadelphia's defense, a lot of younger guys that haven't gotten an opportunity to get on the field as much as the starters, and they're facing off against some of the Nashville starters on that last drive, but they're able to force 
the turnover on downs in the end. That's right, and you know that's one thing that we we take pride in being able to put some guys in and keep guys fresh. We're able to do that right now. Um, that's one thing that you don't always have the luxury of doing. Right now, we're two platooning. Um, we've got a lot of guys that are one-way guys. We got a few that we we let slip back and forth, um, but that's one of the luxuries that we have right now is we're two platoon. Our offense and defense are just focused on one craft, and um, it shows. You know, we're able to be fresh for pretty much the whole game, um, and it, it just really wears teams down. Being a team, especially teams that um, have a lot of guys that are going both ways. So the final score in that one was Arkadelphia 49 and Nashville 12. But Coach Shucker, we've talked about it. This was a Nashville team that showed a lot more spark than they did the previous year. 2021, a little bit of a down year for the Scrappers, yeah. a program that has a lot of high expectations. But this looks to be a team who could really make a run at some point in the season. And that makes this win look all the more impressive. Yeah, they're, they are. They're a really good football team. They're much improved from last season. Uh, they played a lot harder than they did last season. And um, up to this point, have, I mean, they, were, they had a really good record. Um, you know, three and one going into the, into the, uh, into the game Friday night. Um, they were impressive. And we knew that we had to go play well to win it. And we executed at a high level and just kept playing all the way through, executed the whole night. And with Nashville, a team that also didn't have an easy strength of schedule, like the right. Badgers in non-conference facing some opponents from higher conferences. In fact, a couple opponents from the 5A South, like Arkadelphia. That's right. They did. Some of their wins are from 5A opponents. And then they played, a, they got another good win against a, a top 3A opponent in Charleston. So, you know, the future is still bright for Nashville. They're, they're going to have a good season the rest of the way. And uh, I expect them to get back on it and, and start being a tough contender again. So now before we get into the conference scoreboard, let's talk about the Badger players of the week because there's a lot of good performances to highlight in this one, but we can only select just a few. Yeah, so uh, in, a, in a game like this, there is. There's going to be a lot of really good performances, but offensively uh, was our offensive line's best performance up to this point, allowed us to really break things open in our run game and our pass game. Our offensive player of the week, Tanner Cotton, he's our left tackle. He's a junior had the best game on the offensive line this week. Um, just really overall all night long did a great job. He graded out the highest out of all five of our offensive linemen and he's our offensive player of the week. Defensive player of the week is KD Young. He played in for us this week. Again, he changed up some things. We, we changed some things up scheme wise and put him in a position that he, we asked him to make a lot of plays um, and doesn't necessarily mean that uh, he made all the tackles, but he was doing things on the defensive line uh, that opened things up for linebackers behind him. He did a great job of, of understanding the scheme, executed it great, and really was violent and physical all night long, as well as made, I think, nine tackles on the night. And so, Katie Young is our defensive player. He was big, big key to our defensive performance. Special teams player of the week is Latonio Hughes. Had a huge night at wide receiver, but also um, in the in the return game, he had our first return of the season for a touchdown. Big big return, uh, just really took the air out of the game after that, you know. And then you just saw how athletic he is through that whole whole play. But he's our special teams player of the week. And then our Badger Spirit Award is Caden Dickerson. Caden Dickerson does a really good job. Um, he used to be a player in our program, and now he is. Uh, he's taken on the role of helping us with some film and puts together a highlight video every week to hype up our team. And we play that before we either, if it's a home game, we play that um, after our team meal and before we go out for warm up. And then if it's a, if it's a road game, we let him play it before we get on the bus. But it, it, he always does a great job. He's around on the sideline getting live shots of the game, puts together the highlight video himself at his house and then is always ready for it on Friday. Just an overall good, good, part of our program. Another great Badger, Badger Spirit Award winner. And who knows, perhaps maybe we'll even see him around inside Badger football here in the next few years. Could be. He's, he's big on, uh, on film and music and all that and does a great job with it. Well, congratulations to all of this week's winners. And now we're going to take a look at the conference scoreboard to see how the rest of the matchup shook up. And really, just one matchup to talk about as Malvern and Mina were both off this week with open weeks. 
but an impressive win for Ashdown in their first conference matchup, a 49-0 shutout of Waldron. Yeah, you know, Ashdown's one of those teams that have taken care of business up to this point, and they're, they're continuing to do that. And, uh, you know, we'll see them here later in the season, and that'll be a big matchup for us. So we're, we're excited about that. But, you know, with the, the amount of teams that we've got in our conference, there's really not much to talk about other than what we've got. So um, but expect Ashdown to be a big contender later in the, in the year. And you just mentioned the Panthers right there. Two unbeaten teams left in the, seven, in the 7-4A. That's Arkadelphia and Ashdown, but also a lot of good teams. There are only one team in the entire conference right now has a record below 500. Everybody else is above that mark at the moment. Yes, and so, um, you know, we'll see a lot more things happen this week with everybody playing. I believe most people are playing this week. Yeah, Nashville's open and, and Ashdown's open this week. So um, we'll see a lot out of Mina and Malvern. Malvern wasn't able to start conference and Mina wasn't able to start conference last week. So they're, they're going to be fired up, ready to, to prove what they've got. And then Waldron's going to be able to try to bounce back from a, a loss last week, try to get their first conference win as well. So uh, always a big week in the 7-4A, always exciting time, exciting start to the season. Um, even though we're, for us, it's, we're halfway there in our schedule, um, we're just starting conference and it's a big time of the year. Well, this next week, it's gonna be an important week for the Badgers as it's homecoming. And it's a homecoming in more ways than one because this is going to mark the first time that the Badgers have gotten to play in Badger Stadium this season with the brand new turf. Yes, and, and everybody's excited about that. We've got the brand new turf. Um, we've been practicing on it, but we've not been able to play on it. And so it will be an exciting time with uh, the brand new turf, the first home game of the, of the year, actually at our own stadium at Badger Stadium, and, and uh, as well as you know homecoming and, and just the pageantry of the whole, whole day. It's a fun environment. It's gonna be a big game and everybody's just excited. So. Um, we're ready to get there and get going with it. And it's going to be an interesting mix on Friday night because you have a lot of old friends coming back. You're going back to the old stadium, but also there's a lot of new. We mentioned the new turf, but also a new look for the Badgers. And on top of that, too, a new conference opponent in the form of Mina. Yeah, so uh, been a while since we played Mina. We've played Mina in the past. They've been part of the conference. Um, a couple of years ago, we played them in the playoffs. So um, we welcome them back to the conference. and. Um, we're just excited. It'll be a, a fun night overall. It's going to be a great night. What can we expect to see from this matchup between these two teams who are somewhat familiar with each other through the postseason experience and through previous experience in the conference, but really now returning to the way things used to be, facing off against each other year after year? Yeah, so, so Mina, they're going to run the football. Um, that's what they, t you know, they, they hang their hat on. Um, they get into the wing tee and, and do different things. They run the buck sweep a lot. So. Um, expect them to try to run the football and be physical and play some smash mouth football. Um, you know, they're very young, but they're learning and then progressing as they go. So um, I expect them to be the best football team that they've been this season, Friday night. And I expect to get their best. Um, we've got to be prepared. We've got to have a good week of practice. It's going to be a great night back at Badger Stadium. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock, but we do encourage you to show up early as the homecoming festivities will be taking place before the game. And we'll be also, we will also be covering those pregame festivities on ArkadelphiaBadgerTV.com. That's right. Make sure you're there early because we will start all the festivities, I believe, around 6, 6.15. Um, so be there in time to see all of that and get the full experience. Well, until then, Coach, that's going to wrap up this week's show. Thank you for joining us as always. Go Badgers. Go Badgers. Inside Badger Football is brought to you by Bell Wealth Services, Welch Funeral Home, Austin Wingfield State Farm, Southern Bancorp, Southwest Sporting Goods, the accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning, and Plyler, Taylor King Law, Pricing Company, Drs. Rob and Gary Rucker, Eccles, Thompson, and Kneebone, Certified Public Accountants, Clark County Farm Bureau, South Central Connect, Java Primo, Southwest Auto Collection, R&T Dixon Enterprises, Arkadelphia Tire and Outfitters, Patterson Federal Credit Union, Batson Signs, Sonic of Arkadelphia, Dairy Queen, Pediatrics Plus, Rise Counseling, and Print Mania. 
Inside Badger Football is produced weekly by the Washita Baptist University, Rogers Department of Communications, and the Washita Sports Digital Network.